Hey guys, it's Jeff Nicholson, Resilience and Performance Specialist, and today is a very cool day. It's a cool day for loads of different reasons. One, it's sunny. Two, the other thing is, is I am celebrating being well 10 years. 10 years ago, I started my road to recovery. You know, prior to that, for six years, I had been bedbound for a year, sleeping 20 to 22 hours a day. I had been housebound. Having a needing a wheelchair or a walking stick, suffering from clinical depression, hyper anxiety, guilt, and all of the other things that come along with that. And it came to a point where I actually left the house to commit suicide because I believed at that moment my family would be better off without me, and it was the only way that I could make sure that they that they were going to have that because I didn't know how long I was long I was going to be ill, but. And well, you know, that didn't happen. Um, And on May the 11th, 2006, my road to recovery started. I had had the fundamental skills. I had the mindset. I believed that I could move towards recovery, good health and well-being. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to do this video because it's a, a day of mixed emotions. I've had tears. I've been laughing and just constantly smiling because it's it's cool to have my life back. But it's, it's also given me that time just to sit down and think about what is it that I have learned in the last 10 years because of that illness. I went to things that it, during the illness I probably didn't pay any attention to. But since then, I have, you know, and, and, and since, since that and I got better, things that started to, I started to look at. Strategies, tools, tips that have really helped me you know, boost myself up, my positivity, my fulfillment, my passion, all of those sort of things. And when I was reflecting, I came up with 35 different lessons that I've learned. And I'm sure there's more, but it was 35 that just seemed to flow off the tongue. And I'm not going to share them all with you on this video, so relax. Um, Although it is probably going to be a longer video than usual. But what I will do is I'll put all the tips on a blog that I'm, I'm writing for it, and the link will be below on this video. Um, but what I thought I'd share with you are a set of tips that I have, a set of strategies that have been very, very useful for me, and sort of to give you an idea of, of those sort of things that I've learned. So I'm going to share with you the, um, some of the, the Jeff's lessons from the last decade. So number one is starting the day right. It is so key you know they talk about breakfast being the most important meal of the day well how you show up in the morning to me is is the most important part of the day and making sure that you start the day right will very much determine how you um how you move on with your day because sometimes you know we've all done it we wake up in in a in a bad mood um and that generally is how we deal with the day we're probably not as great in communicating, we're maybe a little bit more short with people, but actually being purposeful in how we start the day and making sure we start the day with a a positive outlook, feeling good, good energy levels is so key. And I do this in several different ways. Um, And it can be tweaked. So this is just how I do it. These are the lessons that I've learned. So number one is that as soon as I, as soon as I wake up in the morning and my wife's left for work, I go into the bathroom and I slam on the music. You know, it's it's a James Brown, I feel good. I, I sing to the top of my voice. Dare I say I do a little dance, but it's not pleasant. It's not a lovely thing to see. But what I'm doing is, is I'm just getting my emotional juices going. My dad, By moving around and singing, my energy levels are changing. You know, and I think that's so key because what that means is, is when I start the day, I'm really positive. I'm feeling absolutely great. It's great when I'm communicating with my with my clients. You know, it, it makes us a better communicator. It makes us better leaders. It helps us in our relationships. You know, it makes us more productive, more motivated to go after the goal. So being in that good state of mind is really, really important. But there's other things that I add to that music to increase how that, that effectiveness of how I start in the day. The second one is what I do is I give myself a good pep talk, a positive pep talk every single morning. Now, I've done this for 10 years, almost every single day. And but what I've deliberately what I found was is, is when I was doing the pep talk, 
I couldn't really check to see if what I was saying it felt right, but did it did it look right? So what I've decided to do is do it in front of a mirror, and it can be challenging, but I highly recommend it because what happens is is when you're talking in front of a mirror, you are getting a reflection of your of what you are saying. So if your you know your posture and how you're talking to yourself isn't congruent with the words that you are saying, i.e., if I'm saying, oh, I hope you have a really good day, there's nothing congruent there. The congruency is so important because our posture and how we talk and all of those sort of things have a, a major um, effect and influence on how we want to feel. So what I do is, as a rule, is if when I'm talking to myself it is not congruent, then I will not leave that mirror until I have been congruent and I'm satisfied that what I'm saying, what I'm wanting to feel, is, is reflected by how I look and the posture that I'm holding. So that's another thing that I do as part of my morning routine. The next one is, and something that I've kind of done on and off, but the more I reflect and the more I think about it, it's more of a massive benefit what I do, is I write down my goals every day. I have a specific book that is focused on my goals. So going very professional and off camera for a second. So that's it. It was a, a book that my kids gave me. It's something that I write in every single day. I write down my three core outcomes. That's all I want to focus on, three core outcomes for the next six months. When I've written them down is I want to take a moment and really think about, get the emotional force behind it to think about, well, what is it that I'm, what, what do I get when I achieve that? How does it feel? Because it's that emotion, it's that drive behind us that really helps us move forward and create that forward momentum. So that's a really important part of this, and it helps with my energy levels as well, because I get really excited thinking about, oh, well, that's what I want to do. So that's another thing. And then the other thing is, and I don't always do this in the morning, because it very much depends on what I am doing and what my day's like, is, but I meditate. I, I know, don't get too worked up about it. It's, you know, and, and I think it's also important to acknowledge that at one time, I thought only hippies meditated. I thought that, in order to meditate and be good at meditating, you had to sort of, um, you know, wear hemp and those plastic croc shoes. It's an ignorant belief, but that's what I had until I tried it, you know, and, and, and it's a and it's massively beneficial. There's, there's science behind it. There's, you know, there's plenty of research to telling you how it benefits it. And this leads to the second lesson is don't knock anything until you've fully tried it. You know, quite often we'll immediately jump up and say, well, I'm not going to do that. But the truth of the matter is, is that until we have purposefully tried something, that is the only time we can say, no, it's not right for us. So whether it is doing something like yoga or meditation or, you know, I started to read um, Eastern philosophy books. I'm currently, and it's a hard read, the Tao Te Ching, is those sort of things I would never think of doing until my belief changed about if i want to comment on this the only time i can comment is when i try it and that's it you know if you're standing there going no no i'm, not, I'm just not going to try it you're lost because until you've tried it and I, I i have lost count how many clients have gone i'm not trying meditation because it's just it's not something that i would ever think of doing and then i get a phone call saying this is fantastic i feel brilliant or an example from my wife is I took, we talked about how white noise can help you sleep. And she used to, you know, rib me to say the least. And yet she tried it. And now it's something that she does every single time to go to sleep. And she hates to admit that I was right. I must add that. You know, so it's really important that we are willing to jump in and try that with, um, with both feet. We have to be willing to, to do those sort of things. The third one is you have to accept the failure as part of the process. You know, if you're wanting to be successful, if you're wanting to create the life, if you're wanting to create the business that you really want, is you have to be willing and you have to have that acceptance that failure is a big part of it. You have to screw up in order to learn. Darren Hardy, who wrote The Compound Effect, a great book, talks about that if you want to succeed, the best advice he got was to fail big and fail fast because that is the quickest route to success. The more mistakes you make, the more you learn. 
the more you learn you idea is is that you never repeat the mistake again and you move in that direction that you want so mistakes are an important part of learning so many people stand there and i was one stand there and refuse to move because of this fear of not wanting to look stupid or not wanting to make a mistake and that's just not possible mistakes are always going to happen and the sooner you get comfortable with that mistake or making those mistakes the easier and um, more fluid your success will come because that's part of the process so where am i now so i've done one two three yeah so the fourth one is surrounding yourself with positive people you know, the, there is there are those people in our lives, um, sometimes it's family, sometimes it's friends, that are just not good for us. Um, it's harder when they're family, I acknowledge, but I, it's basically is what you need to understand is, is that you need to surround yourself with people that are going to support you, nurture you, challenge you, be honest with you, and not the kind of people that are going to say that everything you're thinking is rubbish, it's impossible simply because it's impossible for them or um why are you bothering with that dream or that goal to to do x y or z just because they don't believe it's possible you know one of the things that i have deliberately taken my time to do is to make sure that the people around me are cool people and they are there to, to yes they want to be honest yes they want to give you feedback but it's all from a point of helping you grow they're not there to literally suck the positivity out of me and just leave that negative stuff because negative attitudes, negative thoughts, I just do not want to allow them in because they do not do me any good. So number five, it's work on yourself every day. You know, I, my past, I struggle with dyslexia. So um, writing and reading is a challenge for me. But what I decided to do was um, I decided that I would spend one to two hours every single day in developing myself. Now, there's a whack load of books behind there that I can't say I've read them all. Um, some of them are to read. Some of them I've kind of skimmed through and I use them for reference. But I am constantly developing and wanting to learn. On my iPhone, I have over 250 audio books that I'll listen to while I'm in the car. There's podcasts now which give you amazingly valuable information to help you improve your life in some way, shape or form. And the truth is, is when you focus and when you take that, that determination and that deliberate action of I need to develop myself, you become a different person. You become a better person. You know, it, it is just a way to help you develop to move through comfort zones, to deal with challenges, just to help you become a, a, a better version of yourself to, to be able to allow you to level up your life. So how many is that we've gone through? We've gone starting the day right, be willing to do the challenges, accepting failure as part of it. You know, surround yourself with positive people, work on yourself every day. So we're coming to number six. Six is have the courage to speak to people have the courage to ask for help and to speak to people i'm a firm believer that if i'd had that courage rather than being caveman i'm not going to talk about anything because um i i don't want people to see i'm weak or i don't want people to see i'm struggling if i had talked to people about that there's a good chance that i never would have been ill and you know i wouldn't wish what i went through for six years on my worst enemy now, the, 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 what I've found is, is that the people who are prepared to talk about these things, the people who are prepared to, to sort of step out and go, do you know what, I'm really struggling, I need some support. They are the most courageous people that I've ever met. They are the ones that are prepared to lift their head above the power pit, parapet and, and, and get knocked over. But because they are doing that, because they are taking a positive action and moving forward, they are also the people that are going to get sorted. They are going to be the ones that are at far less risk of burnout or far less risk of their business failing because they are seeking help. It's amazing how many business leaders, executives, you know, um, company owners who are either 
at risk at burnout and I'm supporting or are, are going through burnout or are really worried about their business because it's failing because they haven't stepped up to the point and gone, I need to get the professionals in, the experts who are going to be able to help me to move everything forward. And it's not until you're willing to do that and have that courage. And I must say, the people who are willing to ask for help, the, the majority of the people who end up working with me are some of the co most courageous people I've met because they have to admit they're weak at something. They have to admit that they're not good at a certain thing. And that's quite a hard thing for a business owner to admit that there's something that they're not very good at. And by getting that help, they can help themselves move forward. Number seven is people hold on to too much crap emotionally. You know, there's so many things that they hold on and they won't let go because someone has said something or or something else has gone on. And the the biggest thing is there's some stuff that if I'm if I'm honest that I'm still learning to let go. Um but the majority of the thing, and it it's a big thing, but the majority of the things, the small things just I just don't allow to affect me. They're like water off a duck's back. And what I found is is because of that I can make decisions better. Or I can realize because sometimes what we don't do is is when people say stuff to us or when people do stuff, we think it's it's specifically against us. And quite often, we don't stop and think, well, what's going on in their lives? Why are they doing this stuff? Like, Because they could be going through all sorts of stuff. And there's a there's sometimes is we need to look at this and just learn to let stuff go so we can concentrate on feeling good and being in a good place. Because while we're being negative, while we are you know, being angry and and um, and all of this negative emotion that's coming around. Don't for one second think I don't get angry about stuff. I do, but the the, the it's got to be important. Some of this stuff just isn't important, and w how we deal with it and our mental anguish and stress because of it is just nuts. So a big lesson for me was about letting it go. Just leave it. Let it go. Let it do something, take positive action and do something different that moves you towards a different direction rather than this festering thing that can sometimes go on. Then I'm going to talk about number eight. This is the last one. Um, like I say, there's 35 of them on the, on the blog. The other one is about challenging our beliefs. I believe that every single day we should be looking at challenging our beliefs and habits because quite often we've got habits and beliefs that are just not any use to us anymore. They could have been strategies that we used when we were kids and they worked. And because they worked, we've just created this natural habit that this is how we're going to deal with the situation every single time. And quite often, and what I've found is, is the more successful people I work with, I realize that they are constantly aware of what is useful, what is working and what is not working in their life. And when it's not working, they change it, they ditch it, they, they do something different in order to move them forward. And this has been a big lesson for me. You know, there's that saying, if you keep on doing what you've always doing, you'll keep on getting the same results. Albert Einstein describes that as insanity by keep on doing the same thing and expecting a result. What you need to look at is, is and certainly what I've learned is, is that by challenging our beliefs, by challenging our habits and looking at our habits and seeing what is working and what isn't working, all of a sudden massive shifts can happen that move us towards our goal a lot quicker than us sitting there using the wrong strategy. So I wish you the greatest success. I am going to have an awesome day today because I just feel absolutely great. And I look forward to hearing how those strategies have helped you. Send me some feedback on the blog. Tell me what you thought. And, you know, have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.